Hi students, welcome to your Slaughterhouse 5 unit. This video is for students who are opting to do the optional creative project at the end. The reason why I have a video at the very beginning is because you're going to want to consider what your project might be while reading the novel and while completing all the activities for this unit. And so I want to make sure that you understand what the creative project is actually asking for before you even begin anything else. So this quick kind of like five minute video will help you understand what it is uh, that you'll be asked to do at the very end. All right, let's go ahead and check it out. So, in the novel Slaughterhouse Five, there are six primary themes, um, and if you're even if you're not doing the project, um, this is pretty good information. Um, so the first theme is what is the effect of war on society? So Slaughterhouse Five is ultimately an anti-war novel, where Kurt Vonnegut focuses on the traumatic effects that war has on civilians and on soldiers, and so that goes into the theme of what is the effect of war on society as a whole. Um, and he sees it as not only being traumatizing, but also as damaging society, as making it less humane. Um, and so you would check out that theme. Another theme is what is time? So Billy Pilgrim believes that he is abducted by aliens called the Tralfalmadorians, and they perceive time in a very different way. And this is why Billy becomes unstuck in time, or at least Billy perceives himself as being unstuck in time. And he bounces all over the timeline of his life. And that's why the book is told in this fashion, where it bounces all over the timeline of Billy's life life. Um, it's because he is actually time traveling. Whether he's actually time traveling is up to you, the reader, to decide. Is it a figment of his imagination? Are the Trial Midorians real? What do you think? But this book makes us uh, question, what is time? Um, the next is, in what ways are our lives pre-programmed? So this question is the idea of essentially fate versus free will. To what degree do we actually have control over our life? Um, and if you think about war and how um, war can cause people to die quite suddenly, or it can ruin your life quite suddenly, um, that makes us question the idea of how much control do we actually have if something like war can erect irrevocably change our lives. Um, how pre-programmed are we? Also, how pre-programmed are we in our actions? Um, we have things such as responses such as fight or flight, um, these instincts. Um, to what degree are we pre-programmed to react in certain ways? Um, and then that goes into the idea of how do people cope with traumatic events? So when we've experienced traumas that we have difficulty coping with, um, what is it that occurs? There's healthy ways to cope and there's unhealthy ways to cope. And the book shows both of these for sure, especially the unhealthy ones. And so how do we cope with the fact that things happen in our lives that we couldn't control, that make us feel as though something was pre-programmed? The next uh, theme is, in what way is life fair or unfair? And you can definitely see this theme growing out of the previous themes we just talked about. And the fact that um, there's a lot of ways in which life um, can be fair or unfair. And we see this in our characters where things happen to them that maybe they deserve. Or maybe things happen to them that they completely do not deserve. And so in what way uh, does life kind of swing both ways? And then how can a person change their fate? Um, and can a person change their fate? And so this book definitely has a lot of fatalistic themes that makes us question kind of the idea of fate versus fate. All right. So while you're reading, you're going to want to keep those themes in mind because you will then have a project that interacts with those themes. And we'll be doing activities that help explore these themes. So you won't be left to your own devices to try to figure it all out on your own. And um, we'll definitely talk about them more. But what you're going to do for your project is you're going to create a visual model. You're going to develop a compelling model, whether realistic or abstract, 
that visually informs your audience upon your selected topic. And your topic will likely be one of these themes, though it doesn't necessarily have to be. There's, um, for instance, you could choose the bombing of Dresden as a theme, which is a historical, uh, or you could choose the bombing of Dresden as your topic, which is a historical topic as opposed to a thematic topic. We also focus on things such as ageism and cognitive dissonance. And so you could focus on those as your topic. And honestly, those topics, the bombing of Dresden, cognitive dissonance, ageism, they do connect with the themes. And so it's the idea that you can kind of take these historical, psychological, social issues, apply into the themes and create some kind of project on it that communicates with the novel. And you can complete this task in pairs or individually. If you're working in a group of four, or three, you do need to make sure that the project is an appropriate project for a group of that size. Otherwise, you guys are going to need to break down into smaller groups or possibly all work individually. So for instance, if you're doing a painting or even some kind of 3D model, that doesn't make sense for four people. A four person project would maybe be like a video project of some sort, um, something more complex. Um, so keep that in mind when you're planning what project you'll make. And so this project has very little boundaries and that makes it difficult for students sometimes where they're like, wait, I can make anything um, as long as it has to do with the themes and topics of the book. And yes, you can make anything. So here's further descriptions of what your project might be. So you can create a 2D, 3D, audio, video, or any other style of visual model that conveys your topic in a visually appealing, creatively designed, and ultimately informative manner. This can result in a variety of models, see next slide for samples, that vary in scope, whether considering the concept overall or a specific element of the concept. If you're still confused, consider this a best ofs project. Think of all the projects you've ever done. Which one do you wish you could do again? Better yet, think of a project you never got to do and wish you did do that project. And so on the next slide, I have some examples. And so some of them are videos. And if you go back to the main document page, there's a link to this presentation so you can actually watch the videos. Um, but this is actually a video by a teacher, not a student. Um, but in this video, he made a video about cognitive dissonance. So you could make a video that focuses on the concept of con uh, cognitive dissonance. Um, here we have a student who cr focused on kind of the psychology of the brain and created this a colorful head that has symbols on it and the corresponding kind of facts sheet. Um, we have these two student made videos um, that uh, directly relate to the themes of Slaughterhouse Five. We have this more artistic perspective where they created an art project that shows where bombs were um, dropped and they have the country's flags and they have the red to symbolize kind of blood and death and destruction. Um, it's very symbolic and they had a good explanation to go along with it to explain why it looks the way it does. And then here we have, this is something I found online, a student did not make this, but I wanted to use it as an example, a kind of more uh, like... Um, not practical, but a diagram, a more realistic diagram describing firebombing. Um, that was that is visually explains how it works. You could do some kind of diagram if you wanted. Um, so those are different um, types of projects that you could do. Some other projects that students have done. I had a student who um, created like a bomb. It wasn't a, a real bomb, obviously. That would be really bad. But it was a fake bomb. And when you took the bomb apart, inside the pieces, there was references to different parts of the book. Um, and so he like disassembled the bomb and like symbolically talked about the novel and then put it back together again and then used the bomb as a like overall symbol for a Kurt Vonnegut's theme. That was pretty cool. I had another student who did an audio um, project where he compiled like all these different sounds layered on top of each other. There was like creepy carousel music, there was bomb sounds, there was children laughing, there was uh, glass shattering, and essentially like it was the sound effects that would have been one of the scenes of the novel, plus some creative elements, almost like doing the soundtrack for a movie. And then he explains like why he chose specific elements, how it related to the plot, but how it also had symbolic significance to it. 
and what he selected. Um, another audio one is I had a student and she wrote a song about Billy Pilgrim and she sang it and recorded herself singing it. It was beautiful. Um, so you can do music. I had a student who wrote a play um, and then he and his partner performed it and his partner edited the video so that they had like equal load. So he wrote the play, they performed the play together and then the other student, he edited it. Um, I had a student, she wrote a poem and then and put the poem on a canvas and paint it around it using symbols from the novel. There's so many things you can do. Um, so figure out kind of how you're artsy and how you can use that to be in conversation with the novel. And so with that being said, you do need to come up, it's not an essay, I don't want it to be as long as an essay, but you do need to create kind of a museum plaque or a video that would be with your artifact in the museum. It needs to include the title of your work, your your name, the media that you used, a description of your creative process, an explanation of your purpose and message, and a, an analysis of how the work engages and responds to Slaughterhouse-Five. And so this might give you a better idea of kind of what I'm looking for. So nothing too, too long. Um, this one would maybe be a little short. This one's probably a better length. But it just and just like a, an overview of this information. Also, sometimes in museums, there's a video that's pictured next to it where the artist explains what they've done. That's totally acceptable as well. Um, but just essentially some way for me to kind of like be able to understand like what you were intending when you created your project. All right. So that is it. That is what you are doing for your optional creative project if you're choosing to take that option. Um, so think throughout this unit um, what it is that you want to actually do your project on. All right. Thanks so much for hanging out and I'll see you guys for our next video. Bye.